Alright lads, welcome back to another Dauntless video. Today I've got you a sword build and I'm so happy to say it is back to being my favourite weapon within Dauntless. The build I've got for you today is a self-sufficient one. By this I mean that the build only relies on itself to keep itself going. This means the use of no pots is needed. Catalyst is not in the build either. So it's quite different to what I normally do. But I'm actually really having fun with this build. I'm really against spin to win, but because the sword's DPS is lacking, I thought, you know what, I'm going to put the spin to win in, and it actually works really, really well with this build anyway. Um, also, regardless, if you haven't got someone's creator code attached to your store, make sure you're either putting mine in if you feel like supporting me, or if you want to do it, do it for someone else, I'm sure they'll be more than happy if you put the code in for them as well. So make sure you, are, you have filled that support or creator code in the store. But without further ado, I'm now going to pass you through to the build overview and just explain what this build is and the perk summary, etc, etc. Oh yeah, make sure you're subscribed if you haven't, if you like the content. And also if you like this video, make sure you like it. Yeah, thanks, bye. Alright lad, the self-sufficient sword build looks a bit like this. Obviously we've got the Malkarian sword, the Cyclonic Fury, obviously for the electric uh, boost special. You've got Discipline attached with Parasitic, Ardent Cyclone, Recursive Hilt and Storm Sword at plus 3 for the Energized. Um, I like Recursive Hilt just because when I Blade Rush, that's when you dash to the Behemoth with your 3 bars of Valor with your left click. It allows you to uh, gain, gain back those free Valor over 9 sec uh, seconds. Even though this doesn't stack, it's nice to close down on the enemy with this ability. Also, it actually technically costs nothing because you actually get your Valor, uh, valor back after you've used it after 9 seconds. But you can change this to whatever one you want, but I do really recommend using this one. Then we've got the Shroud Helmet with Rage. Rax Chest with Berserker. Tordagora's Arms with Overpower. Frax feet with Wild Frenzy, and obviously the Drass Lantern with Energized. Um, the tonics, don't, I'm not actually using any of the tonics in this build, but if you do want to run tonics, these are my favorite for this particular build. Probably probably the best, probably one of the best free selections for when you choose your tonics anyway. The perk summary looks a bit like this. Plus six of Cunning, Energized, Overpower, and Rage, leaving plus three of Berserker, Discipline, Parasitic, and Wild Frenzy. Um, I was toying around with Wild Frenzy 6, Berserker 6, but I found out with Berserker 3 and Wild Frenzy 3, it was a nice middle ground for attack speed and damage. Obviously, it's nice to have Parasitic there, so when you do take damage when you're in the Ardent Cyclone, even though you don't get staggered, this Parasitic will allow you to stay up to do your half HP of 475. Obviously, as long as the Behemoth isn't too far higher than your level, you shouldn't have a problem with this build. Obviously, Cunning's nice to have for the extra crit chance. Energized plus 6 is amazing for this build because you get consistent stacks for your Ardent Cyclone really, really quick. Overpower is self-explanatory. More part breaks um, means more damage, obviously. And obviously, you're going to be getting quite a lot of part breaks. You're going to get a shock proc pretty quickly. That's why you've got Overpower plus 6. Then obviously, the traditional plus 6 Rage pairing up with Discipline. Just a quick one, lads. This sword isn't the best DPS sword by all means. It's just a self-sufficient one just to get you through to reforging your your, your sword without having to worry about using potions and catalyst. Also, I wouldn't recommend using this build on behemoths too far above your um, level. I'd recommend only going to a, roughly above uh, plus two of your uh, weapon level. And also, I'd like to hear your opinions in the comment section below if you liked the build, if you didn't, etc, etc. But thank you very much. I will see you guys in the next video.